All right. Any other announcements? Acknowledge. All, All minds clear. I don't want your mind clear. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash seasons and cycles. This message is stemming from the prayer that we did a couple of weeks ago on cycles. Y'all remember that prayer? Um, that was a very powerful prayer and a lot of people have had questions since then. So I promised a lot of people that I would go in more detail with some of these things. And I also brought portions of that prayer into this message so that you can have the prayer, prayers to pray. Because everything happens to us in seasons and cycles. And once you get a grip with that and understand that what you're dealing with will only last for a season, it gives you confidence and hope in coming through it. Amen? And being able to handle it. The devil wants you to think you're doomed or the situation will never change when God wants you to view it the way he sees it. This is a season that you must endure. Now, it's easier said than done. I know when you're deep in it, it feels like it's not going to ever end. But it always does. How many seasons have you come out of? How many tests and trials have you survived? Amen. Boy, y'all just looking at me. You don't remember? Look at somebody and say, remember. That's how you come through the one you're in now. By remembering what happened before. Folks tell me, man, my marriage, man, it just is about to hit rock bottom. Just, well, has it been bad before? Yes. If it's a marriage, you've gone through ups and downs. Oh, I wish I was talking to some folks that, that are really married. I ain't talking about shacking and living together. That's not marriage. I'm talking about real marriage. You go through ups and downs. But the ups always come back yeah. when you're in love. Right. Yes, Look at somebody say it's just the season. Just the season. Brokeness is a season. You go through a broke season where you can't find nickels. <laughs> go to the gas station with $3. That's not a gallon. I don't even know if that'll turn the pump on anymore. <laughs> Brother, we can't turn it on for three. You, <laughs> you have to reach between the sheets, I mean, uh, between the seats and try to gather up something else. We need at least 340, 350. That's a whole gallon. But you've been that broke, now you have money. Amen. Amen. You're a better, Amen. look at somebody and say it's a season. Yeah, you've been down on yourself where you felt nobody loved you. Not even the folks that say they love you. Not even your husband or your wife. See, I can't go there because folks too say they think I'm... Yeah, you've been there where you were that lonely and depressed. But you waited and God restored love in your life. Made you feel loved again. So you can remember the next time that it, it is just a season. Amen? So seasons and cycles, they come, they occur, they happen. Testing comes and it happens. With Job, it was testing. But Job, God guaranteed that Job couldn't die. He told the devil, don't touch his life. And the thing that got me about that was the devil obeyed. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that something? I was sitting there because I was riding and listening. I was like, wait a minute. I rewind that. Did the devil obey? The devil couldn't do nothing that God didn't want him to do. So he couldn't touch Job's life. So all Job had to have was faith, which he did have, to keep living. Because the devil couldn't touch his life. He did something. As wild and crazy as the devil is, he knew. 
I can't cross this line. I may talk about the Lord, but he is the Lord. I may not like the Lord. That's what the devil saying. I may not like him, but he is the Lord. <laughs> oh, boy, that blesses me. The Bible say the demons know. They all know. They know when you don't know. You scared of them and they're scared of you. If you feel with the power of God. Seasons and cycles. The devil likes to operate in seasonal cycles. He comes to fight us. And then when we win the battle, he leaves for a time. Look at somebody and say, he's coming back. He leaves for a time. That means that he's just jive. He comes, tries, leaves for a time. He is not omnipresent, so he cannot be everywhere at once. God can be everywhere at once because God is everywhere. God doesn't exist in a form where he has to move forward and backwards. <laughs> he just is. I love that. He's not here. He's not there. He is. Ain't that something? You so great that you defy time, space, everything. So we can't say you over there and you over there. No, he is. He just is. But the devil isn't. <laughs> He's not omnipresent, so he can't be everywhere at once. He must come and go to and fro. Woo, look what I pulled out of Job this morning. Job 1 and 7, and the Lord said unto Satan, Where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord from going what? To and fro in the earth and from what? Walking up and down in it. He's confined to time and space when he's dealing in the earthly realm because he has to walk up and down in the earth. Cycles develop in our childhood. I talked about that Wednesday night. Your childhood development. This is where your adulthood cycles start. Cycles develop in our childhood. Our childhood upbringing and rearing is where most cycles occur. This is why the devil is always after the children. This is why it's important to dig into our children's lives to interrupt cycles that try to form. I'm going to say that again and ain't no child clapping and I don't care. Teenagers ain't clever at all. Don't dig. Oh, it's important to dig into our children's life. You're their guard. You know what guardian means? That means I'm guarding your private hidden stuff too. And I'm going to dig in it till I find something. I'm going to bust you. I'm going to beat you. And then I'm going to love you. But I'm going to dig in. Because I'm protecting you from yourself. And I'm protecting you from a cycle that will try to form that will hinder your upward progress as a human being, as a Christian and a believer. Amen, teenagers. You too, little one. All of y'all. <laughs> Digging in, interrupting. Amen. That's why it's important. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not guarantee. Depart from it. It's a guarantee. Amen. So I'm going to try to protect them as much as I can. Ask them tough questions. Make their knees shake. I want to know. Amen. Because I'm trying to help you. You learn sneaking and creeping when you first born. Little babies know. They finna do something and look. Brother, you can't even hold your head up good. And you cut knives. Let's get the neck muscles formed first. Little babies do that. 
Look at me before they do it. They know. They know right from wrong. And you got to start beating them young. Young beating. Let me got time out. And, now don't you do that again. Boy, you... Man, they need to be... Children need to be... Boy, this is going to get me canceled by the culture. I don't care. This culture crazy. If somebody had whooped them, they wouldn't be canceling folk. They done cancel themselves for lack of beatings. They need beatings. Amen. Men, you beat your, you whoop them. The Bible said beat them, they will not die. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen. I remember one of my kids tried to sass my woman. I don't remember which one was. Who was it? Was it Landon? <laughs> Before the muscles, you know, when the muscles came and you ain't throwing Landon around. And you just gotta just pray for him. He don't, he don't move around like he used to. <laughs> but when he, I think he was a baby. Yeah, he was like two or seven or eight or something. And I think he swung at you. Swung at her? I grabbed him, threw him up against the wall. I said, boy, don't you ever put your hands on my woman again. I said, we was good without you. We'll have another one. Don't you ever. But you know what that does? Now let, now Landon watch it. Let somebody mess with his mama and watch what he does. Because that's instilled in it. That's an automatic chokehold <laughs> he gets in the chokehold that's it ain't but one two people in here can, can, can get you loose maybe not that many you in trouble <laughs> now you're about to feel a little pressure <laughs> amen but that taught him that he learned oh oh so we're supposed to protect us and then his little brother didn't ever have to go through that because he talked to Landon and Landon was like you probably don't want to do that <laughs> but you train up a child in the way he should go when he's old see this is old archaic stuff they probably going to give me a strike on my YouTube channel for teaching this now because the world is just 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 Wearing panties. Earth has panties on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the best way I could put it, Jay. I just, I don't have no other. That, that, that's, it's just the emasculation of the world. Came show old movies with jokes in them because the jokes might offend somebody now. I thought comedy was supposed to hurt your feelings. I thought that was the funny part. Somebody sitting there getting roasted and toasted and crying. That was what had me rolling. You can't do that no more. Finding people's imperfections and stuff that's wrong with them. That's comedy. That, that's, that's the comedy I want to see. Well, <laughs> entertain me with that. And take mine too. You talk about me too. Long as I get a shot back. Long as I get to... I'm that heckler in the audience, Doc. I, I have some for you. Amen. But cycles that come early in life can last a lifetime. So this is why you got to be proactive and fight these things off your kids. Because they come early in life and can last a lifetime. Even after being saved and filled with God's spirit, the devil will come seasonally to tempt us with the same cycles. Even after we have overcome them. Luke 4 and 13, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for how long? A season. Cycles of despair. When we make grave mistakes and errors in our past, the devil will come to torment us over them. 
All the torment you have from your past is the devil and not God. God does not use condemnation. As a matter of fact, he said, as far as the east is from the west, has he cast your sins away from you? So God doesn't have a notepad calling out what you did back when you did what you did. That will totally defy the death, burial, and resurrection of his son. He gave his son so he could erase that with his blood. Amen. See, I'm going to go preach over here because this section, this morning, I maybe they went to the state fair and ate too much junk. Go over here. So when we make grave mistakes and errors in our past, the devil will come to torment us over them. Even though we have been washed in the blood and changed, despair can come when the enemy begins to recall all of our mistakes and errors. Look at somebody and say, get out your head. See, you know, the, a pastor draws, a pastor and the type of message and my personality, spirit, all of that, is going to draw a certain type of member. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, y'all are a lot like me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. We goofy, crazy, like to laugh and have fun, all that kind of stuff, because that's my personality. You a sour puss. <laughs> You're not going to fit in here. Hey, man, if you can't take a good laugh, you're just not, you're not going to make it. Amen. And if you're bitter and all that, because we're just, it, it, that's just the kind of personality. Well, the other part of that is, you know, I've had struggles all my life with being in my head. That's why it's this size. <laughs> see, I can heckle on myself. Just don't let me see you laughing too hard. I'm coming, I'm coming to your road. Huh? What you laughing at? <laughs> I'm good at it too. I can protect my head. But yeah, so I, I, you know, I've had those battles all my life because I was kind of a smart guy. So I like to just knowledge, 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 knowledge. So I spent a lot of time to myself reading, getting knowledge in my head, all of that. So as I got older, things just, you know, I started getting comfortable in my head and not around people. And I started liking it in there. Amen. But then I start getting in trouble for being in there. Yeah, because what happens is when you stay in your head, you lose sensitivity to humans. You begin to objectify and make people not as real as they really are if they're in front of you. You handling them in your head and everything. That's what I'm going to say. And ooh, I was just, all that stuff. And I used to do all of that stuff. So I believe God drew a lot of folks like that to this church for me to help you and me. Can I just be honest? I ain't one of them pastors that ain't going to be honest. I'm going to tell you. And so that was something I'm real, I'm way better at it now. I used to couldn't even sleep. My wife would tell you, I just couldn't sleep. Now, man, I think Friday night, my little band told me I slept 10 hours. I wasn't thinking about nothing but sleep. I'm healed. I'm delivered from that. But I want to help pull you out of two because you're going to get in trouble in your head. Look at somebody and say, get out your head. In your head, you hear stuff folks didn't say. And in your head, you see things that didn't happen. In your head, you feel things that aren't real. Your perception of people is different in your head. Then when you let it out and somebody tell you the truth, you upset. You mad. You mad because how dare you? <laughs> I had this great plan and you shot it down. Well, brother, that plan was great because of the testimony of one. You in your head. You telling you that the plan is great. And then you went around all these men and you can't let it out and talk. And get counsel? God put you here to consult people. People that have done it before. People that's been doing it for a long time. So there's no reason you should be in your head. Yeah. 
you will go to hell in your head. Because your head will convince you you're right when you're not. Yeah. So, when you're in your head, cycles of despair are easy. It's easy for the devil to put a thought in there. You start thinking on it. Now you done called up all your mistakes, your errors. Now you think you trash. You think you're no good. Now you're looking for a blunt. You was delivered from that. You hadn't had that in years. Got in your head. Now you need one. Oh, it got quiet in the house because I know I'm preaching. You're looking for, we see, the, we see your car at the liquor store and you ain't buying cooking sherry. You could have got that at Whole Food. <laughs> you at the hookah lounge smoking hookah. Yes, that's a sin too. Boy, I remember one time Vicky so crazy, she gonna get so bad, but she crazy. Vicky, and you know, Vicky could never get away with nothing because she talked too much. So all you gotta do is just let her keep talking. You're gonna hear everything. All while she's talking, the belt is getting closer and closer to me. I'm just reaching. Just keep talking. <laughs> but she was telling us one time, say, oh yeah, and we went to this place over there and we was in there smoking this hookah and we just was just smoking it and I was there, we me and some people looking at her like <laughs> rewind back what 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 oh the, the hookah yes yeah, it was cinnamon and blueberry and we was So after I whoop you, we're going to have to talk about smoke yet. <laughs> I don't think I whooped her. We was laughing, I think, because it was just hilarious that she, would just, she really thought, oh, there's something wrong with that? Look, somebody in here like... <laughs> you did smell a little cinnamony when I hugged you. I just thought that was some essential oils or something. I I was wondering why it came out your mouth, but hey, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what these folks are into. Hey, man, look at somebody say, don't smoke nothing. Don't smoke. You don't smoke anything. Smoke some chicken, some ribs, turkey, wings. Smoke a brisket. Come on, Eddie. I've been waiting on my brisket from Eddie. Oh, come on, Eddie. Stacy, Stacy, make him make that brisket. Since we're on the subject of smoking stuff. <laughs> no, don't be smoking. Amen. But even though we're washing the blood, and change. Despair can come. Amen? Despair can come. Suicidal thoughts can come. You say it with the Holy Ghost and sometimes wish you was dead. Those thoughts will come. Oh, these folk too saved for me, Elder. I, I can't, I can't. Yeah! The devil wants to kill you. He wants you dead. Because that's the only way to stop you. You don't think he knows that it's just the season in your life and that you're going to get better? Right. He knows that. That's why he leaves for a season. He, he has to leave for a season because he can't keep you down if God is lifting you up. He can't keep you down if God has blessed you. You can't stay down, so he got to leave for a season. But despair can come when the enemy begins to recall all of our mistakes and errors and you sit there play them over and over in your head. All that you've done wrong, all that, and you've just reversed everything. You back to square one again. Especially when these errors have produced physical evidence 
that remind us of them. So you may have some scars in your life from your past errors and mistakes. And the devil takes those to keep reminding you. So your prayer should be, Lord, we cancel all cycles of despair that come to make us feel hopeless or that our lives are beyond repair. Where there was despair, there is now repair. And we believe you are able to change our lives and make us over again. As a potter with clay, you break us only to reshape us. We are better now. We will do better now. Our testimony is sure. And as long as we are living, there is hope. Amen. Jeremiah 18 and 6, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hands. And he'll make you over again. Cycles of depression. Holiday, Memorial Day, special days and holidays can bring yearly cycles of depression. Amen. Somebody died and a certain time of the year you remember that person. And then you start remembering wishing they were here, hating that they were gone. And you start thinking of the things you didn't get to do, didn't get to say, thinking of those things, whatever the case. Or maybe you didn't get to make things right with that person. And they passed on. Memorial days can be hard. You were married to that person 20, 30, 40 years. That's real hard when those days come. Right? Or your mother or your father. People raised you. Were there for you. Sometimes they were your whole world. Because you didn't invest in other relationships. When they died, your whole world left with them. Those are Memorial Day, special dates, and holiday, Valentine's Day roll around, and you single. And you just get that feeling, and you start feeling bad and down. And the devil's able to depress you. ain't going to ever have nobody. Tell the devil, you not either. If you had somebody, you wouldn't be over here messing with me. And you the devil, so don't nobody want to be with you. It used to rain when the sun was out, and the old folks would say, the devil is whipping his wife. So I'm thinking in my mind, don't he always do that? If he's the devil, that's a constant beat down because he's mad all the time. And what kind of woman married the devil? Somebody ain't laughing because they really did. Well, you don't know my husband. <laughs> but these special dates, holidays, they bring yearly cycles of depression. And sometimes it's just a certain time of the year, certain season, fall. When fall comes, leaves are coming, you just get in a funk. And you don't know why. But if you ask the Holy Spirit, he'll show you way back in your childhood where trauma occurred at that time of the year. Your body is conditioned to change during that time of the year. Is that PTSD? That's what it's called. But you had trauma and so you related to a certain season of the year. And you don't even know why. That's when you have your bouts with old sins that you was delivered from. That's when you need the cigarette. You need the alcohol. The juke joint and the pool shack. You need some dice in your hand. You don't know why. You stealing the dice out the kids games. You done towed a Yahtzee ball up. You done broke the pop matic bubble to get some. To tell the kids game up. <laughs> Y'all daddy has a problem. We pray for him. We want to play. We can't play Monopoly. Like, can't play. Daddy. I'm sorry. Just a certain season. Okay. 
Focus, <laughs> focus it on your current condition and how much is wrong can also bring about deep bouts of depression. You do good for a while and then a certain, at certain times of the year, depression and self-loathing comes. That's feeling sorry for yourself. This is the devil. He will continue to come until you learn to truly resist him. You must not allow him to make you focus on things that cannot change and things that have already occurred. So things that cannot change. Why are you up all night thinking about something that cannot change? And why are you up all night thinking about something that has already occurred? You don't have a time machine. You can't go back and die. It's already happened, but that's the devil. He wants you focused on that so you won't move forward. Yeah, we talked about that this past week. Talked about father issues and hating your parents and hating your father or hating whatever. And you holding on to stuff that happened years and years ago and you don't realize how that stuff has shackled you to your past and you can't move forward without forgiveness amen let it go so you can see what's ahead of you you must not allow him to make you focus on things that cannot change and things that have already occurred this is where the power of God must get us focused on the, on the future in him and not in our own power or strength when you're sitting there thinking, you're thinking with your strength. Nobody is having racing thoughts and the Lord is in the thoughts racing with them. No, your racing thoughts are based on your ability to figure it out. That's what a racing thought is. You're thinking of all the different, you like, uh, what's his name, Dr. Strange. You're thinking of all the different possibilities in your head. Trying to figure it all out. And you've totally left the power of God out of it power of God will settle it real quick I'll handle it trust me yeah and then you'll let it go what we cannot do he will do so get out of your look at somebody say get out of your head get out of your head man things look so much worse in your head I promise you it's not as bad as it looks in your head that's why the devil wants to keep, if the devil keeps you in your head, he'll make it look way worse than it is. He can't manipulate reality, but he can manipulate your thoughts if you let him. Yeah, and have you thinking it's way worse. So get out of your head. Talk to somebody. Look at somebody and say, talk to somebody. If you marry, talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. Let them know who they married. I said, I can't get a hand clap on that. Somebody like, let them know who they married. Tell them. You better talk to somebody. Get out of your head. Get out of self. Deny yourself and follow his plan. He will lead you to joy and lift your head. Amen. Your prayer, Lord, we cancel all cycles of depression from our minds, hearts, and spirits break every pattern and remove every weight that was created to weigh us down and make us heavy we need this to stop resurfacing we cancel the devil's assignment to keep us down and we will not overload our minds with overthinking concerns cares and issues lift our burdens clear our paths and help us to fight off all cycles of depression in Jesus name Psalms 34 and 17 the righteous cry and the Lord does what heareth and then what deliver them out of you, what are you depressed for if he's going to deliver you out of all of your troubles cycles of sin Sin patterns hide in our bodies and minds. They hide. 
They hide in your thought process, in your development. That sin reaction you had to trauma or whatever happened to you built a pattern that hides in your body. And when that same situation comes, your body calls for that sin. Look at somebody and say, sin is not your friend. Sin will do you so wrong, it will get you out there and betray you. It'll get you used to it and then bust you. Sin will always do you wrong. Sin is Judas, the betrayer of your flesh. You can't trust it. So when we substitute answers, true answers and remedies with temporary fleshly thrills, we create a cycle of sin. It's so funny how they have these talk shows and different things with Howard Stern and Mari and all of them. And then they bring somebody on there that a uh, prostitute or the, the, the neighborhood body. <laughs> the freak of the week. They bring them all on there and they done had all crazy, this life, this drama, all, this, all these kids, all this you know, the cycle of sin and debauchery, all that. And the first thing they ask them, what happened to you when you were young? Yeah, yeah. Well, my dad wasn't, or somebody, a relative, molested me, raped me. There's always something that happened. Yeah, yeah. And what it did, it put a pattern of sin, a cycle of sin that hid in their bodies. And so their reaction to trauma when they feel trauma is that sin. Yeah. It developed with them. Can I preach in here? So whenever that feeling comes around, the sin comes to tempt us for an easy but ineffective fix. Yeah. Yeah. Down on yourself, you're looking at porn. Feeling bad about yourself or whatever, that, those, those are the things that happen. So you can get an easy fix, a fleshly thrill to feel better. But then after it's over, it was ineffective because you feel worse. Once the sin has transpired, we are left in a worse state than before because sin does not answer the issue. Can I just be real in here? Don't answer the issue. We must ask God to give us the answer and allow him. See, this is the point. Everybody asks for God to give him the answer but who's going to hang around and allow him to surgically remove the sin cycle so the enemy cannot keep coming around and using it against us sin is missing God's mark that's what sin is missing God's mark and God's mark is complete and whole and when we're able to depend on him to overcome our issues instead of the sin, then we will not be open for the devil to bring that sin cycle back again. Does that make sense? Easier said than done because some of these cycles have gone on for years and years. The worst part is when you fall back in it, you feel you erased all of your progress because that's what the devil's going to tell you. Can I keep preaching in here? Your prayer, Lord, deliver us from all sin cycles. We break every chain that pulls us into habitual sins or causes us to fall back into things we have overcome. We will not keep repeating them or falling victim to them. We cancel all cycles of sin, including substance abuse, sexual sin, lies. Some folk just lie. Tell bearing, some folk need to shut up. Hatefulness, angriness, maliciousness, and reclusiveness. Get out of your head. And that reclusiveness leads to mental and emotional sins. You know, you can mentally and emotionally sin because you're reclusive. You pushing, you forcing your uh, your friends to stay away from you. 
And then you end up on, by yourself, in your head, woe is me, and now you're back drinking, smoking, or something else. Can I preach in here? Yeah! Mental sin, wishing people dead, wishing harm on folks, trying to get folks back. That's witchcraft. You might as well get a black hat and, and start a fire and burn some sage. You wishing that on somebody, you might as well just, ah, I'm going to get them. You just sitting there thinking, wishing bad stuff? That's a sin. And it's a cycle of sin that happens every time you feel the way you feel. Get a calendar and mark it and watch. You'll see a pattern. Luke 11 and 4, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into what? Temptation. temptation. That's what I just talked about. Being led into temptation. You got to have God's help so that you will not be led into temptation. By the trauma, by what happened to you, by a seasonal cycle. Can I keep going? Cycles of regret and shame. Some of the hardest things to overcome are the opinions of others. Some of y'all life is on a course that you never wanted it to be on because of someone else's opinion. When we are raised up to believe that people's opinions counted for more than God's opinion, it is hard to be delivered from that cycle. We do good and walk in confidence in the word of God and pleasing God. Then we fall because of someone else's words. Oh, this has to stop. We are conditioned to worry about what people think, say, and do. Baby boomers were notorious for showing the best to everyone while hiding their flaws. So a lot of times, we were taught to be ashamed of our flaws. That makes it hard to get delivered from it when you're ashamed of it, because when you're ashamed of it, you hide it. And when it is hidden, victory can't be brought to it. Victory is light. How can light shine on it if it's in the dark? But this is a flaw within itself because it causes the children that grow up under this old hiding this and hiding that, don't say this, don't say that, all this trying to look a certain way in front of other people and all this kind of stuff. The kids grow up and they're self-conscious and people pleasers instead of God pleasers. They're more concerned about what people think than what God thinks. Living in regret and shame because you did not measure up to the expectation of others is a curse. Only God's opinion matters. Amen? We must align our lives with God's expectations and stay there. Never allow the words of others to keep revisiting you or you will never have godly contentment. Amen. Amen. I don't want to say forget them, forgot them, never thought about them. But sometimes you have to say that. Forget them, forgot them, never thought about them. Devil bring it up, forget them. Hey, you better get some courage. If you know who you are now and you know what God has done for your life, you can't be listening to everybody's opinion about you. Amen. Don't be listening to everybody's opinion about your people. Uh-oh. Yeah, let people mess up with you themselves. Somebody might be trying to keep you from a godly relationship that could bless your life because they don't have one. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Here's your prayer, God. We pray against the opinions of others that make us feel regretful and shameful for our past errors, decisions, and choices. We cover our past with the blood of Jesus and believe that we are restored, renewed, and ready to continue the work that you started with us. Go deep within our hearts and minds to give us confidence in you and your ability to make us new creations. We cancel all regret and shame and we walk in newness, believing that we are better than.
before. Amen? Anybody believe they're better than before? I know I'm better than before. So don't be bringing up before. I'm better than before. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Cycles of bad relationships. The devil will come to visit and revisit your relationship progress every year. That was peeking in on your marriage. See how you're doing. Yeah, in your window. Yeah, see how you're doing since the last time he called some rukas. Yeah, he's peeking in every year. Just when you feel you have overcome your low self-esteem and you are in a good place, devil comes to make you feel that people you love don't love you. That's what low self-esteem is, being unloved, feeling unloved, feeling unworthy of love. Yeah, it's hard to believe it, but wives feel like that. They feel their husband don't love them. Husbands feel their wives don't love them. They're in the same house. That low self-esteem is a booger wolf. Man, because it will make you your own, your greatest priority. When you have low self-worth. When you have low self-worth, you want to tear other people down to your level. Because you think everybody thinks they're better than you. Can I see who said that? Hey, Amen. Well, folks don't want to hear this. I'm going to preach it anyway, though. Yeah, that's low self-esteem. Be careful with that, man. You'll ruin stuff with that. You begin to believe that the people you love don't love you. You'll begin to hear things they didn't mean and see things they didn't do. The devil is the master of sabotage and he will ruin a good thing for you every time. He wants your marriage to end, your godly friendships to end, your place of fellowship and worship to end, and your relationship with God to end. In relationships, one bad season, ooh, you better hear me. One bad season can destroy the whole thing because you can say and do things that cannot be reversed. You better watch the low, low esteem spirit. That low esteem spirit will sabotage it and mess it up forever. Forever. Can't be reversed. It's time to stop the devil from blocking your peace and ending all of your fruitful relationships. When you are alone, you are weaker than when you have loved ones and friends praying and believing alongside you. Hey man, don't you let the devil make you think, yeah, you better off by yourself. You can do bad by yourself, honey. Well, anybody can, devil. How about I stop doing bad? That's why I don't want to be by myself. Good gracious. You're weaker than when you have loved ones and friends praying and believing alongside you. Break this cycle now. Ooh, this is to somebody. Break this cycle now before you end up doing things that you cannot recover from. There's always hope though. I don't know what you're talking about, preacher. There's always hope. Hope is this message right now. If you ignore this message, you ignore hope. Can I preach in here? Your prayer. God, we bring all bad relationships to you. Remove the issues in our lives that cause us to pridefully see ourselves as better. Always blaming others for failure. Help us to be prudent. Considering the future in choosing who we get close to so that we will have better relationships. Those that are family, give us peace with them. Help us to understand, ooh, somebody just choked. Those that are family, <laughs> give us peace with them. Help us to understand their faults, their failures, and why they target and attack us. Understanding. Lord, we are no better than they are. We are no better than anyone. We all have sinned and fallen short of you, God. Remind us of this. Oh, I'm losing, folks. Let me hurry up. 
in our marriages. Help us to take wrong to keep peace. Can you just be wrong? Can you let her be right? Can you let him be right? Why you always got to go get the gavel in an argument? With our parents and in-laws, help us to be peacemakers and exemplify biblical love toward them. With our children, help us to be understanding and not use them to look better in the eyes of others. Amen. Repair every failed relationship and make the best out of it. You hear what I said? I didn't say make it better. I said make the best out of it. Amen. Because all failed relationships don't need to continue. Here comes the next part. <laughs> Some relationships are not healthy for us. So help us to learn from them and do what? Move on. The older I get, the more moving on I have to do. Because I realize, I, well, I realize that some folks can't handle who I am. They can't handle who you are. They can't handle what you have. They can't handle what you've done. And the older they get, the more they regret what they've done. You can't be around folks like that. Amen. You thinking about love, they thinking about killing and destroying. So they can feel better. So some relationships are not healthy for us. So help us, Lord, to learn from them and move on. All you got to do is pray, Lord, anybody in my life that does not belong, rid them of my life, Lord. Chase them away. Spray holy grade on them. Run that roach. Don't say that. Don't say that part. But pray that. God will remove everybody. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's folk you wasn't even thinking. Now wait a minute, Lord. I liked it at them. I'd like, nah, you prayed it. You didn't know what their plan was. You didn't know what they were planning. Man, I am preached in here today. I don't care about the job hand clap. I don't care. I don't care. We do not want to live in era or with a relationship complex, afraid to be around others. We cancel the cycle of bad relationships and receive your way. God, give us your way of seeing, hearing, and acting toward others. In Jesus' name. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Yes. Summary! Yes. Blessed word today. Yes. One of the greatest weapons against seasonal cycles of the enemy is understanding that it is just a seasonal cycle. That's a weapon to be able to call it that. When it's all happening, you call it that. This is just a season. God is going to deliver me, and I'm coming out of this. So it may suck right now, but I'm coming out of this. Look at somebody say, I'm coming out of it. Look at somebody say, I always come out of it. Look at somebody say, I've been here before, and I'm coming out of it. So half the battle is done when you know that it's going to end. It's not going to last, and it will not be this way always. Right. Have faith to know that you are growing out of it and leaving it behind forever. Yeah. Even when the trappings of it resurfaces, you will have a path of victory once you learn the effective prayers that disable it. Yeah. The devil is not more powerful than God. He is just a nuisance coming to pester and annoy you. He's not coming with power. He's just coming to get on your nerves. He you can do that well. It's your mind that has the power to inflict you with the nonsense, with his nonsense. That's your mind. He just put something in it. 
and your mind is working on it. <laughs> so, get your mind, look at somebody say, get your mind together. Get your mind together. Let these warfare prayers protect you and usher you out of these cycles so that you can function in the peace of God. Amen? First Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Anybody got a spot reserved in heaven? Reserved in you. Devil, you can't have my spot. My spot is reserved. You can't sit in that seat no way because you're the devil. That's my seat. A spot reserved for me. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a what? A season if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. For a season. For a season. Because the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the season is here to try your faith so that your faith can help you make it through the fire. Once you conquer that, the devil will leave for a season, but that season can leave forever. Yeah. Everyone stand to your feet. <laughs> Seasons and cycles. And if, you know, we're going to trust God to just break this seasonal stuff, the seasonal slump, the seasonal... Whenever this certain season comes, whatever it is, and the enemy comes with temptations and different things that you, you feel that you, you know, each year it comes, whatever it is, we're going to break them right now. So if that's you, just come on up. We're going to trust God to break these things for good. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Ooh, man, this folks all the way. Ooh, Lord. Well, folks like the truth. Amen. Come on, just come as close as you can and just make the effort. Freedom cycles. Cycles. And if you got young folks, pray for your kids. Bring your kids up here. Stand by. Pray for them. Trust, man, ain't no cycle developing in you as a child, like some of that stuff got to us, it ain't gonna get to you, I'm gonna fight it, I'm gonna dig into your life, I'm gonna ask questions, I'm a man, I wanna know, I wanna be the blocker, a real protector. Anyone else? We're gonna trust and believe God. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this message. God, we thank you for the prayers, even the prayers that are in the focus prayer on cycles, God. We thank you for that prayer and how it's placed in parts of this message. But God, this message is just revealing to us how these cycles come and what these cycles are. God, we pray right now for deliverance from all seasonal cycles. We pray right now for the same thing coming up. Same things happening over and over. Each time of the year, things start happening. Start hearing the same thing, seeing the same thing, having to fight the same. Father God, remove these seasonal cycles from our lives right now. Set us free. Lift your hands up right now, everyone. Lord, set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I want to be the person, God, that you want me to be. Set me free. All cycles of sin. No matter how long they've been occurring, no matter what happened in your childhood, 
no matter what trauma it was, God brought you here to Adamant Believers Council today so you could be set free. You could be better in him whom the son has set free is free indeed. So Father, as our hands are lifted up, we receive victory over every cycle. We receive victory over every seasonal cycle. We receive victory over everything, God, even things that came through intense trauma, things that happened to us when we were young. Whatever it is, we receive victory right now, God. Set us free in Jesus' name. Set us free, Lord. Set us free. And Father God, when the enemy comes and tries to bring it this next season, we will have a path to victory and be able to walk right through him, see right through him, and move on to victory in Jesus' name. We receive your freedom right now. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Now hug somebody and say, the cycles are broken. The cycle is broken. Come on, hug. It's broken. I'm not going there with the enemy again. It is broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe in it. We believe in it. Whom the Son has set free is free in deeds. Start your new life, your new season, your new year. It starts now. You don't have to wait on the first of the year to do a resolution. It starts now. We're coming up on the witching season and the season where the devils are working for Halloween and all of that. And sometimes that brings about feelings and mindsets and different things. But we're going to walk right past it, right into that rewind. And we're going to see folks all over the world saved and set free from that message in the name of Jesus. We don't have time for trick or treating. Hallelujah. Whom the Son is set free is what? Free indeed. Come on, give God some more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 